The Battle of Nantwich took place on the 25th of January 1644. However, before that, on the 15th of November 1643, English troops returning from fighting in Ireland landed at Mostyn to join the Royalist forces in Cheshire. They were known as the English Irish Army. Lord Byron, at the order of the King, arrived in Chester from Oxford with a cavalry regiment to take over command of the Royalists in Cheshire, including that English Irish Army. By 1643, most of Cheshire, with the exception of Chester, was under parliamentary control. Within weeks of the arrival of Lord John Byron, the situation had reversed, with Cheshire now in the hands of the Royalists and the parliamentary headquarters at Nantwich under siege. On the 29th of December 1643, Sir Thomas Fairfax and the Yorkshire Horse were ordered by Parliament to ride from Falkingham in Norfolk to relieve the siege of Nantwich. Arriving in Manchester, he gathered additional forces from Yorkshire, Lancashire and Cheshire. On the 21st of January 1644, Fairfax marched from Manchester with 2,300 horse and 2,500 foot soldiers. Fairfax travelled into Delamere Forest and turned south of Blakemere and it's here he had his first encounter with the Royalist Cavalry Patrol. After a short skirmish, the Royalists were swept aside. He continued to travel south to Tarpley and spent the night on Rudhall and Tiverton Heath. Early next morning he set his army in order of battle and started out for Nantwich. Just as he was climbing the rise near Stoke, there was a second skirmish with Royalist forces. Again, they were swept aside. He arrived on the high ground over King Acton by late morning and the officers had a conference. As they could see large numbers of Royalist colours around Acton Church, Fairfax decided to try and avoid battle and march straight towards Nantwich. If the parliamentarians looked down onto Acton, they would have seen a scene that was much less wooded and there would have been a myriad of small fields. This would make a difficult area for cavalry to operate. They would have identified Burford Crossroads just below their vantage position. The Royalist garrisons at Acton Church and Dorfold Hall and the defensive walls around Nantwich. The Royalist forces faced the parliamentary army coming down the Chester Road. Some Royalist cavalry may have been seen just arriving as they'd been held up by the flooded River Weaver. As Fairfax waited for the rest of his forces to catch up, and having chosen to march directly towards Nantwich, he sent his pioneers to cut a path through the hedges. The pioneers had to cut a path wide enough for an army to march along without too many bottlenecks. You can see Acton Church in the background. With the pioneers having cleared a path, Fairfax set his forces to march towards Nantwich. The Royalists turned their forces to attack the flank of the marching column and the Royalist cavalry moved towards Burford Cross to assault the rear of that column. The Royalist forces gradually sorted out their positions for an attack. As the Royalists moved forward, the parliamentarians realised their predicament and they turned to meet the attack. Battle commenced. The battle was really a series of isolated skirmishes. In some, the Royalists enjoyed initial success and the parliamentarians were forced to retreat, but the parliamentary line held in the centre. Suddenly, the Royalist centre collapsed and the troops began running back towards Acton Church. Seeing the change in fortunes, the Nantwich garrison burst out of the Welsh Row Gate, dispersing the small Royalist force that was supposed to stop this incursion and attacked the flank of the retreating Royalists. At this point, the Royalist cavalry retreated from the field towards Chester. The Royalist cavalry had escaped, but the foot soldiers were besieged in Acton Church, with the soldiers finally surrendering the next morning. Many of the prisoners were housed in the Nantwich Parish Church, others re-enlisted in the victorious Parliamentary Army. This is an example of one of the many news sheets that announced the parliamentary victory, with lists of the prisoners and some of the slain. There may well not have been very many killed during the battle, but they are said to be buried in the dead man's field behind Acton Church. 